page five now. Just days ago in Chicago, violent protesters attacked dozens of cops defending a statue of Christopher Columbus. In fact, 19 of those officers were sent to the hospital for simply doing their jobs. In response, President Trump said he'd send a surge of federal officers to the city, something its Democrat mayor quickly rebuked. So the president offers help to the city of Chicago, and it's turned down by its mayor. Her stance appearing to fall in line with the demands of the anti-police protesters causing chaos right outside her door, literally right outside. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Mary Newsbaum. Hi, Barry. So I can't help but think about the election implications that that are involved in this conversation. I mean, we've seen President Trump accuse the Democratic Party of, of blocking Bernie Sanders from getting his party's nomination. But now we're seeing Joe Biden adopt these radical leftist policies. He's running on these, even though a few months ago he was, you know, touting the fact that he was a moderate. So what sort of impact is this going to have on voters in the fall? Let me make a dramatic prediction on your show right now. All right. If the Democrat Party under Joe Biden sticks with this policy that peaceful protest is to be encouraged, supported, and allowed, and then by definition, these are all peaceful protests, the Democrats will not only lose their chance at the White House, which right now looks like a fairly good chance, but they will lose the chance to get the Senate and might lose the House, and here's why. Constitutionally, the right to peacefully assemble is guaranteed. For some reason, millions of people, for some reason, do not know what the word peaceful means. There's no intelligent sixth grade civics kid right now in America that would look at Chicago, Portland, Seattle, Los Angeles, or Minneapolis that are all being burned, looted, and destroyed in the billions and say, wow, that's quite a peaceful protest. And yet every mayor in every city I just mentioned, who's a very progressive Democrat, mm -hmm. is defending those protests and doesn't fight the looting no. until it gets to their house. And then they want to call the cops, who they're in the process of defunding. I, I mean, it, <laughs> it, when, you, when you say it out loud, it, it's, it's nuts, like you said, yeah. Yeah, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a path for Trump to go back to the White House uh, in November if the Democrats stick to this as their uh, landmark policy decision, which is peaceful protest is great. Mm -hmm. We define looting and destruction and murder and brazen attacks on peaceful citizens as peaceful, ergo, keep out the federal troops. Middle America is not going to go for this. Right. Well, and the other thing that stands out, I mean, you, you see the Republican Party, if you've been watching things closely, like most of us have, the Republican Party has been consistently u united around the same message, the same principles, the same ideals. They've been backing the president nonstop. And then you look at the Democratic Party, it's, it's increasingly becoming more splintered the closer it gets to election day I, I mean what does that say ab about the party's ability to be able to tackle some of the big issues that our country is facing right now They've, they're painting themselves into a corner and now they're nailing themselves into that corner that they painted themselves into keith ellison the former congressman radical from minnesota who's now the attorney general uh, of minnesota came out and said if you want to call and report a rape the police should not respond if the rapist left. Hello, <laughs> did you hear what I just said? Yeah. <laughs> a first class felony is not gonna be responded to by the police. I guess they're gonna send a social worker with a box of candy. I mean, that it, is yeah. untenable for America. Well, and at what point does, I, my, what I'm having the biggest trouble wrapping my mind around is that it's hard for me to understand why it's so hard for some of these leaders to call a crime out for what it is. It seems like they're, they're hesitant to do that, and, and I'm not quite sure why when it's the people of their cities that are suffering the consequences of this. There's an inherent hatred for uh, standards of care in America that have been, well, prevalent for over 100 years, which is you have a reasonable expectation as a citizen to walk down the street peacefully, not get attacked. You have a right to open a business and not have it looted. 
you have a right to drive around safely and not be shot at. Shot at. Look, the murder capital of America is Chicago, mm -hmm. where there are more people killed there every weekend than in all the combat troops uh, in situations around the world, and yet the mayor has the audacity to say everything's under control. She's lying, she knows it, the citizens of Chicago know it, and the citizens of America know it. You can't defend the undefendable. You've got to be insane to live in the center of Chicago, and God forbid you go out at night and you don't have bulletproof glass. There are kids getting shot on the stoop at birthday parties, I mean, and yeah. the mayor says, we don't need any help. No, I mean, and every weekend it's the same story. I mean, every weekend you're looking out to see how many people it was. It's not so much whether it happened, it's how many people lost their lives due to the gun violence that that's a lot of these Democratic leaders, like you said, aren't stepping in to, to stop. And in fact, they're trying to stop uh, the federal agents who are trying to stop this. So it doesn't really make sense when you think about it. But if, if we continue down this path, Barry, ultimately, what is your biggest worry about what with the radicals and and the impact they're having the waves that they're making within the party are you worried about the the bigger the broader impacts this is going to have on our societies oh my goodness yes you know you go back in american history to like the watts riots uh in the 60s uh, businesses didn't come back for decades you're going to have flight of capital and flight of the tax base from every city in america where you have imbeciles and I mean that word literally, running the asylum and thinking this is all okay. When Nancy Pelosi, as the Speaker of the House, third in line to be President of the United States, says at a press conference in regards to uh, people tearing down statues, well, that's how people protest, that's what people do, I don't need to respond to it. That is a license to loot and kill and maim and do whatever you want and at the same time let's defund the police in other words we're going to disempower the people that keep the peace we're going to empower the people that are anarchists that want to destroy the american system and if they get into power control both houses in the white house you will not recognize america in a year from now it'll be a safety disaster and that's, I mean, that's a scary picture you're painting. So hopefully lawmakers and voters, so people are, are listening and are willing to step up and, and do something about this uh, at, at the ballot box this fall. Barry Newsbaum, thank you.